Amazon, Apple, and Movie Studios. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by the Wondery Business Movers Podcast, The Enlightenment of Steve Jobs, in Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and in the Wondery app. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is part two in a two-part Mac Voices Live discussion. In the first part, we dug deep into Twitter's new subscription plan and and analyzed whether it works or not for our panel members and whether we think it works for you. This time around, we tackle some of the recent Amazon stories and debate whether or not Apple should be buying movie studios and a few other things as well. So let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Well, I want to move us along because there's there are a couple of other things we definitely want to get to tonight, and and one I think is kind of important because um, it's going to be turned on if you don't do something about it, and that's Amazon Sidewalk. And Jeff, I know you were again as we record this today, you were on Mac OS Ken, um, or excuse me, in a few minutes with mm-hmm. with Ken Ray talking yeah, so a little bit about too. this. So. Bring us up to speed on Amazon Sidewalk, what it is, and why we should be concerned. Okay. So what it is, it's uh, think of it sort of like a mesh network that lets you have your smart home and Internet of Thing devices that need to have an Internet connection still be able to uh, be connected even when you're away from your home network. So, uh, uh, Frank, you mentioned my video, uh, in the video, I watched it. Oh, thanks. What, one of the examples that I used was you have a smart lock on your home that uses Bluetooth. You leave home and realize you didn't lock your door. So instead of having to go back home, you just pull out the app on your phone and lock your door. And even though you're not in Bluetooth range, it still works. And that's because it's using echo devices as uh, as bridges to create this mesh network so that you have that that constant uh link up back to your smart home stuff without having to actually be there and uh, tile is a is a partner in this so this will create sort of like what we have for air tags but for tile meaning with air tags you uh it, any anytime there's an iPhone nearby, it's going to give you the AirTag location. With Tile, hoping everyone has the Tile app on their on their phone, yeah, uh, I, I've had like zero luck with that. But there's a lot of Echo devices out there, and so now those Echo devices can serve that purpose as well. You don't have to rely on someone having a uh, uh, a tile app on their phone and walking by wherever your your tag is sitting, so that's that's what it is. Just you know, in in a super high overview, the uh, the security concerns. Well, first Amazon says that they're they're basically firewalling this service, so it's anonymized. Meaning, if your neighbor's internet goes down and then their smart lights hop over to use your connection your uh, you know, your eero is a bridge it's or not not eero your echo is a bridge it's not going to tell you hey chuck is using this right now and it's not going to tell you hey chuck you're using jeff's echo right now and uh, and there's encryption levels in it as well and uh, and it also caps the amount of data it can use. So this is not a thing where your internet connection suddenly becomes open for the whole world to just surf the web. Uh, it, it's limited to, uh, I think it's 80 kilobits yeah. or kilobit per second bandwidth and no more than 500 megabytes total uh, usage over the course of a month. And um, uh, the... So here, here are the, the real issues that I'm seeing with this. One is that uh, is that people are freaking out because it's opt out, not opt in. Totally get it. I wish it was opt in instead of opt out. But at the same time, if it's not opt out, no one's going to go turn it on. So the service will never get used. And, and the other concern that I have is that even though Amazon has 
over a year of testing into this platform. We really haven't seen it out in the wild in a, in a grand scale, so we don't know how secure it really is. So the so that unknown right there, sure, I. Uh, I, I have some issues with that because you know we just don't know. Well, let and me ask you. Uh, um, uh, um, crap. Oh, also, the number of devices that it supports. My guess is a lot of people don't actually have those, so you have to have an Echo from 2019 or newer, or an Echo Dot from 2018 or newer, and uh, and then all of the newer. Uh, Echo products supported as well. And Brittany, to answer your question in the chat room, yes, you you turn it off in the Alexa app. So it's like settings, my account, account settings. It's or buried. It's uh, see if I can do it from memory. More settings, account settings, sidewalk. I think that's it. So I have a question, Jeff. Before uh -huh. we before we go down the rat hole of talking about Amazon, etc. So for Apple AirTags, is there an opt-in, opt-out, you know, capability? And is it uh, are you is it on by a default unless you opt out? Uh, you know, how do they two stack up in that regard? That's an awesome question, and it's awesome that you brought it up. Yeah, uh, AirTags, you have to opt out of sharing, or or, or being a uh, uh, an access point for other people's air tags. So, uh, you know, basically if you don't want to share or, or to have your iPhone used to, uh, to, uh, help locate other air tags, you have to kill at least part of the find my service on your, on your phone. So it technically is right. an opt out. It's your, you, it's, it's yeah. turned on. So yes. it's the same, same air tag is opt out, not opt right. in. But, so the same thing that is what Amazon is doing. But yep. Apple's, doesn't bridge to your neighbor's internet. That's no, it bridges right through your phone, directly through your phone. Right, but so uh, it's using your yeah, internet. Yeah, but Amazon is saying they're gonna like it. Also, you didn't mention, but it also does Ring. Uh, it goes through Ring. You know, new, oh, yeah, newer, they own Ring. I forgot newer, about that. Newer Ring devices. And I, I don't think they've mentioned Eros. You 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 mistakenly said Eero, but yeah, Amazon, I, I Eero is Am it, it is Amazon. So you have to wonder. Uh, and and you know the the impression I got was like, well, if my internet goes down, the Ring is still going to send notifications through my neighbor's internet. Um, mm -hmm. so that you know that's a whole different thing than than what Apple's doing, and the caps are pretty high. I think it was like five hundred. Um, yeah, it was 500 megabytes, megabytes. total that's, over a month. That's, that's nothing. And, uh, well, and it depends on what kind of, what, what kind of uh, internet you have. It's nothing for me, but it's not it, nothing for everybody. Um, yeah. And it's, it's actually pretty low bandwidth usage because it's uh, no more than 80 kilobits per second. Right. But, you know, what do you think it is for air tags? I mean, that's, that's probably like, you know, bytes per second. Well, for air tags, I would assume it's less because the amount of of uh, data that you're going to send with an air tag is uh, is basically the same as what you'd have with the tile. So it's going to be this is this is me, this is my location. Tell people about me, and uh, and with with uh, uh, sidewalk you can have a little bit more information, but it's not like you're going to stream your webcam through through your neighbor's Echo. Uh, are you sure about that? What about the ring? Um, I'm trying to remember from the white paper. It's it's limited how much you can you can do. Like like for a camera, I think it's limited to you can get a snapshot, but you're not going to stream video. Well, I mean, it's and to I me, might be it, wrong it doesn't, on that. It doesn't seem white even remotely kind of comparable the... to what Apple is doing. So, it's, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. Um, yeah. Well, uh, for Tile, it's it's very much like what Apple is doing. Um, for the other parts of it, yeah, not quite the same. Um, and uh, and actually, it this whole thing brings up for me what is. Uh, 
an underlying problem of major tech companies, which is they have failed to adequately uh, address the need to, to build reasonable trust with us as their users. And the fact that we're sitting here having this discussion about sidewalk right now, something that on its surface sounds like a really great idea. And yet it's suddenly become this scandal, which the suddenly part to me is kind of funny because Amazon announced this well over a year ago and said, this is what we're yeah. going to do. Here's the whole thing. And, uh, and now as we're coming up on the, hey, we're going to just turn it on for people. Uh, now's when people are, are starting to get worried about it. Yeah, well, that's humans yeah. for well, you. So, um, so, so Mike, Mike is either listening to ACDC or he violently agrees. <laughs> Mike, what, 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 are you, what are your thoughts on this? I, I agree with the comment about, that Jeff made about uh, companies haven't um, built up enough trust with us. Uh, I, I think that's why people don't think twice about Apple when they and they believe them when they say that everything is encrypted. We're we're just anonymizing all of the data and aggregating it, and we're finding stuff that way. We're not looking at your personal information, but people know that Amazon is. When you go look for something, and then you go to another website and you see those Amazon ads showing up, telling you, "Hey, you should buy those shoes. You should buy that <laughs> the home improvement mm -hmm. thing." You know that you were looking at. Uh, we see that stuff all the time. And so they kind of haven't shied away from like, we're going to make money off of the data that we collect from you. And people are, I think, kind of rightfully apprehensive about something that is opt out instead of opt in when they're going to be taking data. And I agree with you, Jeff, the, the data they're taking is probably absolutely no different than what Apple is doing. Maybe Apple is even worse. I don't even know. But just because it's Amazon, people are going to be like, ew, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and, yeah. and that's that's all on Amazon because they, they are now. Another aspect yeah. of this, if I understand correctly, is so Amazon devices, when you set them up, you have to give your Wi-Fi password. Right. I mean, yeah, like when I set up my Wi-Fi network. Yeah. yeah. But, but what's happening is so apparently Google is collecting this. And so they've got everybody's Wi-Fi password because how else are, is my ring going to con conduct connect to my neighbor's uh, network? Yeah, no, that's not how that works at all. Um, so, you, so the devices that you have that can that can take advantage of Sidewalk have to be Sidewalk compatible. So this is all about using right. uh, unused parts of of the radio spectrum that that the Echoes have. And so that so they're acting truly as a bridge. They're not sharing your Wi-Fi. They're sharing, or, or they they just have this radio frequency that compatible devices can 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 see, and then talk to that specific echo. And well, I would uh, say here, but you, Jeff, you're you're like ninety seven percent correct. It's but it's not that uh, they use radio spectrum is that you know they can identify from the mac address they know oh this is another google device so in instead of instead of refusing these packets you know we'll let them into our stack and we'll process them for the better good of sidewalk well the, there i i took that straight from their white paper the white paper says that they're they're using unused parts of the radio spectrum specifically for this and uh, and so devices have to be compatible. So and, if you have a device now, and but but it also does include the Bluetooth. link for the white paper in the chat. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I'll go get it. Oh. It's as a matter of fact, the white paper is in the in the uh, description in my YouTube video, which is actually where I'm going to go find it. <laughs> um, hey, I'll I'll yeah I'll definitely uh, one of the things you said you you hit right right away, uh, Jeff is. It has to be a more a, a newer device, 2018, 2019 device. All the all the Amazon Echoes I have have to be at least anywhere between three to five years old. I mean, I've had them for a while, so I mean they still work, but those devices aren't going to work. And there's a, you know, a fair amount of the population that have these devices are going to be of that age. So Amazon, the Amazon Sidewalk to them is irrelevant. I mean, it's 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 mm -hmm. not it's not going to it's not going to matter to them if you have it enabled or not enabled. I mean, I, I disabled it on my account, but it's pointless because every Amazon Echo device I have is got to be at least four to five years old because I've according I mean, to, 
John Gruber, you must have a device that's enabled that's that's new enough because right. people are reporting that you right, can't disable saying. it if you don't have a device that uh, supports it. So um, you, you can't pre uh, disable it so that when you do buy a, a device, it's already disabled. You you can't di you can't disable it. It doesn't even the option doesn't even appear unless right. you already have a device that supports it. So, right. Yeah, it doesn't show up for me. Whoops. Okay. All right. I'll go find so, so, it again. Uh, <laughs> and then another thing I want to talk on just the, 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 the tech press and uh, taking advantage of this. And, and, you know, as you said, this was talked about last December. I mean, uh, the, to, you know, uh, security, the security guy, Steve Gibson did a whole review of the white paper and, and he blessed it. And he's, he's a guy that, that is, you know, you can, pretty, you can really pretty much trust in the security world. Um, but, then I, then I look at Ars Technica has an article here from Saturday and, and it almost was like, it was almost like clickbait. I was like shocked to see somebody like Ars Technica doing, doing something like this to, 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 to start. And then not just them and a lot of them just, you know, scaring, Oh my God, you still, you're still, you're going to be sharing your internet with your neighbors and, and getting people right away to click that. And, and, and really all this is what we're talking about right now in, in the fact that, I'm I'm kind of sold on it after I watched Jeff's video and and being able, and talking about this that I, I don't think it's as harm as it's it's harmless and I don't see it as as being such a problem um, to, after after talking about this. Uh, right, I agree, but I think was it uh, was it Mike or Jeff or you know, amalgamation of the two of them were pointing out that the problem is these companies are not communicating clearly and right. as a result, you know, they do not have you know, any accumulated goodwill. Maybe Apple does a little bit, maybe not. In some circles, depends where you are, but you know, these things are dead serious to a lot of people, and they really need to over communicate what they're doing, you know, so that you know it should be. Let me say it differently: If I were at Amazon, it would be a complete fail for anybody who lets a headline get written. Amazon wants to let you share your neighbor's, you know, why, you know, internet. You know, that's a that's a complete fail. Whether it's mm -hmm. whether it's irresponsible journalists, whether it's you know clickbait uh, you know uh, at work, whether it's you know Amazon communication, somewhere in that whole system of Amazon sending messages to you know somebody running a story, somewhere in there there's a lot of stuff that's failed. And the reason I asked that question to Jeff at the start is this is on the face of it, uh, based on what I've learned you know on this uh, session here. This is as innocuous as what Apple is doing. So um, there you are. Yeah, um, I, I think it is uh, intended to be as innocuous as what Apple is intending to do with with uh, AirTag and Find My. And, uh, and while Amazon doesn't need me defending them because they're a big company. And, uh, and, and I think that there's plenty that can go wrong with sidewalk. I think that they've actually done a really good job of telegraphing what's going to happen and being very transparent about this because, yes. because, uh, I mean, like I said, they have well over a year of very open and very public documentation about exactly what they're doing here. Um, you know, so good on Amazon for that. The other side of that though, is damn, they had to do this because if they, if they were going to try and have any modicum of trust with, uh, with end users and the media, man, they had to be so absolutely transparent about this, but just like they have been. And yet they still haven't been able to, to control the message and they still have uh, companies writing clickbait headlines and uh, and things like Amazon wants to share your internet with your neighbors. Well, no, that's not what Amazon wants to do. But hey, you know they they haven't earned that trust, and uh, and so now we have this happening. I want to get Jay in here, but I I, I want to just make one little point here. I feel like that with Apple, they've uh, AirTags is, is new, but Find My is not. And it seems like that I'm, I was, every time I installed a new version of the OS or whatever, 
I was constantly being assaulted by, you know, turn my turn, find my own, don't turn, find my own. Every device I add, do you want to turn, find my own? Don't you want to turn my, uh, find my own? And now I have a, a new service coming to Amazon. And yet I had to read about it in the tech press. I didn't get an alert on my phone on the Alexa app saying, hey, Sidewalk is coming. Do you want to participate or don't you want to participate? You can opt out here. That so would have been I, really good for Amazon to do. Sure, yes. that was never going to happen. Well, Probably not. Jay, I know you You said you had some stuff, and I, I want to make sure you get in on this one. So, yeah, every, everybody's going to be mad here because I'm going to defend Amazon very strongly here. Um, first, in terms of any security concerns that may pop up, I would trust Amazon probably second to only Google when it comes to security of information. And here's why the people that leak Amazon information, the stuff, the hacks, Oh, Amazon database, millions of records are found. That's not Amazon. Those are the people that set up a new instance and say public to everybody so that I can be lazy and don't have to think about security on my end. The other side of that is Amazon is the second or third richest company in the world, depending on who you're asking and what time of day it is. They have the ability to hire the best security people in the world and probably have done so. They're not going to tell the news not to write salacious posts because honestly, if they do that, they're going to write the salacious posts and then they're going to say Amazon messaged us and begged us not to do this, um, which just makes it look even shadier. Honestly, mm. We've we've dealt with a similar backlash where at the company I work for, when we changed our open source license to a more restrictive license, knowing that there was going to be a section of the audience that wasn't going to understand the reasonings for why we did that or understand what the consequences were going to be for the common user, which were basically none. On the other side of that, you have a technology that is being pushed forward that opens the door for so many new types of innovation. Honestly, if my if I leave the garage door open, I mean, yeah, that's a very convenient thing to be able to do. To be able to check all of these devices is great. But I do imagine that one day we'll be able to say internet is a common resource, just like electricity is. And with technology like this, we don't have to think about where my internet is coming from. Everywhere you go, there will be reliable internet somewhere and somewhere available. You'll be able to piggyback off of it. And before I wouldn't have had probably as much support for technology like this because, oh, Skynet and all that stuff. However, 2020 screwed up a bunch of people's lives. When you have kids that are in poor neighborhoods that don't have the best and most reliable internet going to their local restaurants to piggyback off of their internet. I know that's not what this is doing, but it is the type of technology that makes it ever so much easier to have a world where that isn't the case. Now, I mentioned in our private chat that as much as I'm in support of this, I don't like that Amazon is doing this by themselves or doing this in conjunction with Tile, which to be honest, if it were Tile saying we're going to do this and we're going to piggyback off of Amazon's network and stuff, I would have a lot of red flags pop up because Tile is not the large company that Amazon is. They can't afford to hire the most professional and best security researchers in the world. But on top of that, this type of technology needs to be a collaborative issue amongst the greatest businesses in the world. Apple should be in on this. Amazon should be in on this. Google should be in on this. They have things like the Fido Alliance. They have that new, I forgot what it's called now. It used to be called Chip and now, or Chopper, and now it's something else. But these companies are still holding on to competitive advantages that are driving the next generation of technological advancement, as they should, according to their shareholders. However, there are certain levels of technology where if just like with sky not skynet just like with um was it starlink um the tesla system if these were systems where you had the greatest people the greatest minds the greatest companies instead of them poaching from one another you had them all working together to say how do we make te our technology better 
How do we make our network communications better? Let's work together so that we can just go, oh, hey, you're using your iPhone. That's a part of this. Oh, you're using your Ring doorbell. That's a part of this. Your Google Wi-Fi solution. That's a part of this. We don't have to worry about is Amazon taking this information to get our location to serve us ads based on where we are if all of a sudden everybody is fighting in on this and the technology and the innovation on it is done in the open. So yes, I love this technology. I want to see it. I'm probably not going to use it if I'm honest because I don't have any Amazon devices other than our ring doorbell that's like three or four years old. But at the same time, I want to see these companies stop lording this stuff over one another and saying, oh, Apple has ultra, you know, ultra Bluetooth or whatever. And oh, Amazon has sidewalk and Google's going to have, who knows, streetcar or something. They're going to come up with something and then shut it down three days later. So it doesn't really matter. But all of this to say, they just need to start working together on this stuff because that's how we get the technology that, like Mike said, we can trust because we know that there are vetted, you know, names that we trust working on it but also we're getting the innovation that we actually want to see happen with these devices. Did I already miss my cue to start the slow clap or? <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by the Wondery Business Movers podcast. From the iPhone to Pixar, Steve Jobs led a career full of groundbreaking innovation, but his road to success was a rocky one filled with major failures and burned bridges. From the makers of the hit series Business Wars comes the new season of Business Movers, a weekly podcast that explores the legendary and controversial career of Steve Jobs. On the new season of Business Movers, learn how Jobs took Apple from near disaster to total triumph. Steve Jobs liked to say a computer is a bicycle for our minds. He saw how bikes elevated our minds and bodies, and he thought computers could do the same for the brain. Every aspect of Steve Jobs' story is compelling. Jobs continues to be quoted by business scholars, business leaders, and tech pundits. Even years after his death, every move Apple makes is still shadowed by the phrase, what would Steve have done? Find out how Jobs evolved from Apple to Next to Pixar back to Apple, and how his approach to management changed as a result of those experiences. Listen to Business Movers, The Enlightenment of Steve Jobs on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen one week early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Wondery. Feel the story. Thanks to Wondery for their support of Mac Voices. Jay, I, yeah, it, it, it was. And 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 so I'm going to rain on your parade just a little bit, okay? Because if I you, think... If you do, I'm going to talk about presentation software. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close to agreeing with you, Jay. Just, just stop. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy. Yeah, where is that eject button? Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, listen. I, I think everything you said is true. I think it it is it is an, an admirable objective, and I hope we get there at some point. But going back to some of the one of the comments made about the so, some of the social media networks previously, these companies have made their beds and now they have to to lay in them, and they have developed the reputation for using their customers taking advantage and unfortunately taking information without asking without telling um, and and using it arguably not maybe against their customers but you know for their own gain and so we have we have amazon doesn't quite raise the, raise the suspicion flags that uh the google might and that facebook definitely would but apple has you know they've made their bones on privacy and so I think that with, I think most, most I'm not going to say everybody here, um, but most of us would trust Apple more from a privacy and security standpoint than we would the other, the other FANG companies. And so, yeah, I agree. It's an admirable thing and I hope we get there. But my first concern would be, okay, if, if, if Apple's participating in this, I want to make sure that they are making my device secure. I the thing the reason... I wonder about with that though is how many I'm sorry Mike how many how many of these people that are worried about Amazon's security or or privacy realize how much of the internet is run off of Amazon servers like but how that, much all that, that's that's a non sequitur Jay that's really a non sequitur Azure is catching up anyway 
I, I mean, sure, it's catching up. And, and oh, I, again, that's why I think if everybody's involved, it's a better game all, all across the board. But, I mean, we talk about Amazon. We can't trust Amazon because they sell us ads. Like, okay, Am- half, half of the internet world, if not more, trusts Amazon to make sure that their information is delivered reliably and as fast as possible. So if that's the case, I mean, again, I'm biased because I, I work with Azure, GCP, and Amazon servers all the time. So honestly, I think they're all great. But at the same time, I'm trusting Amazon with security on this as much as I would trust anyone else, if not more, because Amazon does have the track record. What they lack is, hey, this information is also profitable. Maybe we use this to give you some better targeted ads, which again, the more people that are involved on this, the more protections you have against that kind of behavior. What's missing okay, is this I, is exact. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just going to say, Jay, I think um, just want to be you know careful that you know, just because you know, Amazon has a services business, you know, that they sell to an enormous number of uh, companies, large and small, established and startup. Uh, that's different than what Amazon, you know, the business entities that have Ring and the other products that interface with Sidewalk. So it's uh, it would it's incorrect to say that okay because you trust Amazon in one context, you know that immediately that you know is a transitive property that flows to trusting Amazon in everything else that they do. So I think I think you came back when I first objected and you clarified that. You know, I just want to you know point out again that yes, Amazon does a hell of a lot you know, to make sure that uh, you know all their access and you know their their developers on AWS have a lot of tools to make their data secure. But you know, that's I think different than what the concerns people have are about sidewalk and data privacy and so on and so forth. Well, the and other side of that is, you, Mike. go ahead, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, uh, get Mike I was in. just going to say, Jay, you made a comment about how Amazon could use that information to sell better targeted ads. And I think the thing that why people don't trust them is because they don't explain exactly how they're going to use those that information to show you more retargeted ads. And there's no way for you to turn that off if you don't want it. I think with Apple, we know exactly what they are trying to sell us which is devices and iCloud, <laughs> stuff like that, services. Uh, they've kind of made their line in the sand, like all that creepy stuff, like we're not involved with that. And I feel like if Amazon were to just lay out and say, this is exactly how we're going to do this, people would feel better about it. But then also, like the the other issue here with the the um, the sidewalk thing. And this isn't exactly what they're doing, Jeff, but this is what like the, the message that people are, are promoting is like, well, they changed their mind and they're just switching it all of a sudden. Like, so there's not that trust that even if they were to be completely transparent about this is what they're doing, that they would stick with that the moment that they realized that there was more money to be had, which I mean, that's really the, the big thing to your point, Jay, about like the Amazon servers. I mean, people said the same thing when they bought Eero. I don't want Amazon sniffing on all my internet traffic. Well, they're probably not, <laughs> but they technically could they? Maybe. I mean, they're under the same umbrella, so I'm not going to get that paranoid about it. But I guess as long as there's that possibility, and they're not going to confront it and say this is what we're actually going to do, then people are going to run with it and create a worst case scenario. Mark Mark mentioned something there when he talked about you know we trust Apple, but I wonder if the creators of these products, the products that would use Sidewalk, would trust. Apple as much and be willing to pay what Apple's going to charge them for licensing of that technology yeah. than what Amazon would. And the the reason I say that is I would trust Amazon's service, sidewalk service to work 90% of the time. I can't trust Siri as it is. I want to make sure it didn't turn on to turn on the lights in the next room <laughs> hey, right hey, now. Hey, toilet paper. <laughs> to, hey, Alexa, to me, a lady. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, though, this is so different from all these other things. This is a backdoor to the internet from my facility to the rest of the world. Jay, you're running a pie hole. What this is? Nope, your pie hole's ignored. 
We're going to hop out to the internet. If you've got a firewall, that's ignored. I want to control the packets in my facility. I want to be able to do that. And Amazon is saying, nope, we're not giving you that control. We're, we're going to bypass. And, you know, and as, as Mike says, who knows what they're going to decide to do next week or next next year. I, I don't. You know, and, and, you know, the idea of a mesh network, that's great. That should be the mesh should be the facility, not individual, you know, my doorbell talking to my neighbor's doorbell. I, I don't want that. My my take on this uh, is, you know, I, I have a ring doorbell. I was already thinking, you know, it's old, so I don't think it's in this, but I was already thinking, you know, I think I don't want that. I don't think I ever want to buy an Amazon network device ever again. That's my take of this. And there's one other thing too, and, and Jeff, maybe you can address this because I have not read the white paper, but if if there really is no benefit to Amazon, then why not just come out and say that, that we are not going to be using any of the information collected? Put that, okay. put that in the, writing, put that out to the public. And then if they, then if you get caught, yeah, your pants are down around your ankles, but you know, it, just, just say it and then do it. The, the benefit for Amazon is they sell more echoes and, uh, and they, and they entrench people deeper into the Amazon ecosystem. Now they, what, what they say as far as the data goes is that they're not sharing it with anyone. So anything they're collecting, they're just keeping. However, and this is a place where they're screwing up big time. They're reserving the right to, at some point, share data with third-party developers if they so choose. There you and, go. And as soon as, and, and that's right, it's very clear in in uh, uh, all their documentation. So, if they were to say, "Yes, you know, we're, we are collecting some information that's necessary to make this whole system work, but we're keeping it just in-house, and that's it." forever that would be a really great step towards helping to improve our trust in whatever it is that they're doing but keeping that that door open where they say well we're not doing this but we could that, that what that tells me is what yeah it makes shareholders happy but the way i translate that is we're not doing this but we will <laughs> I, I mean Again, a, a public a publicly traded company's first responsibility is to its shareholders. Um, we right. we tend to forget that at times, but them saying, "Hey, right now we don't have a plan for this data, but hey, we could always sell it." Says, "Hey, Amazon stock, you should go up now," because that says, "Hey, there's a future plan to do something with this data. There's a current plan to do something with this data. Trust us to get there." Jay, find, you brought up yeah, a, a very important point about uh, about these companies. They are beholden to their shareholders. And it's also important to remember these companies are not our friends. And that includes Apple. These are companies that are here to sell us product. And they just have different strategies that they're all using to accomplish the same goal. Frank? I find, I find it really interesting that, you know, the majority of us here are Mac fanboys, and we and completely we, trust we have, the anger girls on, here too. Yeah. Sorry about that, Brett. But we're, we're all without we, we just gloss over that. Yeah, we trust Apple, of course. Now, I've talked to people that use Windows and other services, <laughs> and you tell them this this thing with the air tags. And they go, how do I know Apple is really encrypting that information? Yeah. So I'm just wondering that because we are Apple centric, we feel safe with that. But as we're sort of dumping on the others, the others are looking at Apple that way. There are definitely people that are doing exactly what you're saying. <clears throat> And Jay, I, I, I take your point, and I'm I don't I don't want to demonize shareholders, but Apple has the same obligation that Amazon does to their shareholders, and they've chosen a different path. Yeah, and they so, make it three times as expensive. Well, 
if that's the if that's the cost, I mean, that's something that we've we've talked a hundred times about here, is that you know Apple has been hamstrung with making the S lady better because of privacy concerns and you know not as open and free with sharing of information and recordings and all that as Amazon has been, and Amazon clearly has. To, to your point about you know reliability, Amazon clearly has a better performing product a high percentage of the time. And how much of that is because of the compromises they've made with security and privacy? I don't know, but it's a question I think that has to be asked. So it's, I, it, we're, oh, we're way over time. And, I, yeah. and there's one last story, and Jay brought it, as a matter of fact. So, and it sort of ties in here. So, it, And it's not going to, I don't think, warrant a lot of discussion, but you never know. Jay, I'll let you talk about uh, the other Amazon story. So in the future 007 episode, uh, movies that are going to come out, what you're going to see is whatever the 00 agent is of the time, holding a fire phone and walking around <laughs> and getting his intel from Q using oh, yeah. Amazon Sidewalk. <laughs> and then he'll have an Apple. Exactly. So I'm wondering with, with Apple buying, or not Apple, sorry, with Amazon buying MGM, should Apple have been in this conversation? Should Apple have looked at buying another company? Who would they buy? I'm just wondering, because I know Sony has said, no, nah, we're going to be in it until Disney decides to give us enough money for everything Marvel. Um, or, I mean, I guess until pigs fly or whatever. But at the same time, we've seen Apple and we've seen what they've done with Apple TV. I don't personally have an opinion about Apple TV. I don't. I mean, I have it. I don't really use it. My family does. So that's that. But at the same time, we've also seen a, a bit of quote unquote censorship in what can be done with artistic direction when you're playing with Apple's money. Uh, I honestly think Amazon's going to be a little bit more liberal in that space. But yeah, I mean, the overall question is, one, should have should Apple have been trying to buy MGM? Maybe they were, maybe we don't know. Um, but also, who would you like to see Apple buy up in terms of a production company? I'd like to stop seeing people buying up all these other companies. There's, 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 when there's rivalry to write better stories, get better performers and stuff like that, you come out with better art. When you have all the money in the world, Frank, you don't care what people think. You just spend your money how you want. Well, that's I know, a, but I'm just saying not, from from a no, 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 that's a viewer's no, that's point of view. True. That's that Jay. That's not true. You know, I mean, no, Apple, Amazon. That you know, whether you agree with them or not, they do have their own philosophies and outlooks, and they may change over time as their CEOs change and evolve. But you know, I think uh, you know, on the past, on this, on. Uh, on Mac Voices uh, or Mac Jury, you know Chuck has had uh, various uh, you know, people you know, that have talked about sh what should Apple do? Should they buy somebody? Should should they buy a production company? Should they buy a distribution company? And you know, the reality is, you know, Apple's way for like it or not is you know, they want a organic growth, and they're willing to bootstrap it maybe by acquiring technologies. That's their strategy. Amazon shows that they're willing to go out and acquire other companies and do a bolt-on acquisition of a large business. Is that right or wrong? Don't know. You know, if you agree or disagree with either one, buy or sell your shares. I mean, that's uh, that's the nature of you know competition. We'll see what happens. Mark, Mark, you're you're not hearing me, man. I'm not. I'm not saying what should have Apple done. I'm saying what do you want Apple to do? That's the difference. We, we get to play in the sandbox now. There There is no, well, fiduciary, da, 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 da. no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to see an apple-laden Black Panther. I want to see Shuri running around, people on their iPhones that all of a sudden turn into a full suit. I want to see this, and I want some ideas. I want to hear what people got. Okay, yeah, so I, I agree. I First and foremost, and maybe just call me you know, simple and intellectually lazy, but I'd like Apple to fix a bunch of the annoying bugs you know, that they have in you know, all of their software and all their devices. Do that is point number one. You know, point number two, you know, get off the pod about AR or VR glasses, or get off the pod about you know, cars. You know, we know that they're looking 
for bigger and you know, bigger, ever bigger markets you know, to continue their growth as a corporation. But you know, at some point they need to go forward and they need to offer us stuff instead of just you know trying to, oh, we had a fantastic year. Everyone's homebound because of COVID. Everyone had stimulus money. Everyone bought iPhones. Isn't this great? Isn't it a miracle that you know Apple services went up as a result? You know, this is all mechanical and just brain dead. You know, let's let's see some you know, new world class, you know, new, truly new and innovative products instead of just rehashing the same old about you know the you know Siri remote. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm glad this is at the end of the show, <laughs> but you know, to me. You know the amount of stuff in the in the uh, in the Apple blogosphere that you know, is related to that stupid remote. You know, guys, you're you're in the echo chamber. Get out of it. You know, it means nothing. Add robot. That's who but, Apple should buy. But you know, but you know, let's see. You know, let's see. You know, Jay, to your question, let's see some really new, innovative products instead of you know. Everyone thinking Apple should try to do catch up because you know, they think somebody else is doing something that is more innovative, you know, by buying a film library. Hey, I've I've heard the movie industry is a a big way to drive into innovation in technology. I just want an answer, Mark. Come on, give me something. The DC universe do, should Apple make the next Batman? I mean, come on, give me something, Mark. No, Apple should, Apple should <laughs> Apple should get new writers and do something new and different. You know, th you know they're not they don't need to stop you know and copy you know other people. I just need more Ted Lasso. That's all. Yes, <laughs> yes. Bring on Ted Lasso. <laughs> that was phenomenal. But you, but you know what? No, there, there's. I know you guys are joking, but that's an interesting point. Ted Lasso Lasso did not exist before Apple brought it to life, mm -hmm. and there's so many. Not entirely movies. true. That's so, that that so okay. That's an SNL <laughs> skit. It wasn't a TV show before. It was SNL, right. wasn't it? Skit. It was, it was a commercial. Was a commercial. It, was a, it was an ad. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I stand corrected. I did not know that. <laughs> but but you know, but it, it was something original, a, instead of these constant reboots that Hollywood does. I mean, Amazon or Apple. I wish somebody would hey, stop hey, doing these re I, reboots. Uh, Jay, Jay, I have I'll vague memories. Apple. Apple, Apple should get in line. I can't wait for them to do John Wick, you know, four through forty-four. You know, won't that be great? <laughs> I think it I would have be. vague. I have vague memories of what it was like to be in a movie theater, and back then, <laughs> um, I, I remember sitting and watching trailers, and and there was not one original movie. Everything was a driv. The one I was yeah. about to give credit to, it turned out it was a book. Um, but that is the way that that industry has been going. And a lot of the original work has all been coming from other sources like the internet, um, and, and more independent people. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I know that it is more profitable to do something that is based on something else. Each individual thing makes more money. Now, could that be Apple's differentiator that they start doing more original things? It totally could be. And I think that was what they were trying for, but, but oof, that's, that's not where the big kids have been playing. And, and it's, it's saddening. Right. Well, you know, the NBC, I forget the guy's name who was the producer or the main Mahoff at the network at that time, but Seinfeld was done originally as a summer replacement and went for about eight episodes. Didn't really get good reviews, but the guy believed in the show. So when they had like a winter break, they let them do like another five episodes. And then the next year, they let them be a summer replacement. And then eventually Seinfeld went on to make history. You just need to <laughs> someone to say, hey, you know, I'm willing to fall on my face because this doesn't match anything we've ever seen. And not now give up immediately. people are going to know that for decades, maybe even centuries are going to know about Seinfeld. I, mean, I remember in the early 2000s, like going back and watching shows from, you know, that started in the 80s or, or 90s and thinking there's no way that they would have given this show that many episodes to catch on. And, oh, yeah, and now the, they, they were just getting more and more impatient. Yeah. I'm just Although saying I, I, Bat, Batman with 
I mean, he can't kill. Apple doesn't Batman's like already the, owned by somebody. Apple doesn't like the heavy stuff. You know, the utility belt would be cool. He would talk to Alfred, who would be replaced by Siri, and would come in like eight different voices. There's a lot hey, of Alfred. fun that we could be having right now, and y'all are being Debbie Downers. I hey, shouldn't say Alfred. Debbie Downers. No, actually, it was say, JJ. You're right. I, I think instead of John Wick, we can also have Fast and Furious. You know, from there we go. Apple cars. Yes. Apple cars. Apple cars. And there you go. Fast Furious. Yes. <laughs> racing. Jay, you spent way too much time thinking about this. You really did. I haven't. I just can want us imagine, to have fun and not yell at each other. Viruses <laughs> that take over the cars. <laughs> Can't we all get along? I thought I thought Jay, this was us. I'm getting so along. sorry. I have like no oh, knowledge okay. of current pop culture. It's I, it's really tragic. I, I'm Battle. still sticking with Bad Robot. I think that would be a really good purchase. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff coming out of Bad Robot. The no, great little toaster, but to it's a Mac Mini. Chuck, I'm going to have to go with it. <laughs> all right, guys, we're way over, way over time. But thank way. you all for for coming. Um, I, it, it, it's been it's only an hour and a half. It's been a really interesting discussion. Um, discussions, I should say. Um, so we're going to go around the room next week. and and let uh, let everyone know who's who's been here and where they can find you because you will be back. I hope next Tuesday. Um, so this time I'm going to re re reverse it and go from the top. So Frank, you're up first. Where can folks find you? Uh, I have a blog, ympnow.com. I write a monthly article for screencasts online. You can find me on the free version of Twitter, uh, at FP tree. And you can find me on Instagram at Frankie P H R A N K Y. Great. Thanks for being here, Frank. Thank you for having me. David Ginsburg. I think I know where folks can find you, but you better tell us. Yes. Find me at in touch with iOS at intouchwithios.com. Find me here on Tuesday nights. You find me on Mac to the Future Co live cast with Guy and Warren on Wednesday nights on Facebook and I'm on the Mac show on, on Fridays usually. And uh, on the Twitter, you can find me on Dave G65. Thanks as always, Chuck. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks. The Iron Man himself, Mr. Mike Schmitz. Uh, you can find most of what I am writing and making these days over at the sweet setup.com, including a whole bunch of stuff about obsidian. I do a couple podcasts, uh, bookworm.fm relay.fm slash focused and intentional family.fm. My personal stuff is at faith-based productivity.com. I'm on Twitter as at bobblehead Joe. Great. Thanks for coming, Mike. Go get some rest. You deserve it. <laughs> Jeff Gamut, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your sidewalk video. Um, I definitely I threw it in the YouTube chat. Thank you for throwing it into our chat. Um, where can folks go and find that and everything else you do? Uh, how about Twitter and Instagram? Jay Gamut, both places. And uh, for all the videos I'm doing now, youtube.com slash Jay Gamut. And um, here on Tuesdays, the big show on Thursdays, the Mac show on Fridays, sometimes on Thursdays in touch with iOS. And I'm thinking now I'm just going to go hang out at Jay's place and we're going to start our own movie production company and screw what everyone else thinks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People are doing that's, that now. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've both got, both got your YouTube channel, so you're halfway there. Yeah. Yep. This is going to be Jay? epic. Yeah. No, not epic. We had that discussion last week. Not epic. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a copyright <laughs> infringement. Jay Miller, the man who is planning the, the next reboot of the Green Hornet. Where can we find you? So it's the Green Lantern, right? Except for he's colorblind. So you have all <laughs> <laughs> But how will he know which one is Sinestro? <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, I wasn't going to throw it out, but we did win the we did win the battle on the YouTube front. So you can now go to youtube.com slash K J A Y Miller. Uh, and you yes. can find me everywhere else at K J A Y Miller. But also remember, it is a uh, it's Pride Month, and it's also Puerto Rican Heritage Month up in New York. So uh, if you yes. know some people that are feeling a little happy, you know, that want to celebrate, celebrate with them, you know, and just let them know that you're there. And 
of course, be safe because with pride parades also comes a lot of stuff that's unfortunate to have. But at the same time, we can all stick together and be friends, right? Unless we're talking about Apple movies, apparently. If, and then in that yeah. case, all gloves if, are off. If, or or if, a keynote. If, yeah. if this show doesn't doesn't demonstrate that we can all get along, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim Ray, thanks for thanks for being here. Um, where can folks find you? Uh, if you're looking for Mac software, go to ProView.com. And otherwise, you can find me as ProView Jim on Twitter. Great. Thanks for coming. Mr. Fuccio with the Mountains of Chile in the background. Where can folks Matt find Fuccio. you? Oh, very short and sweet. Twitter. Pay or free. You know, we'll see if they have paid one. At Mark Fuccio, M A R K F U C C I O, short and sweet. All right. Thanks. Thanks for being here, Mark. I appreciate it. Last but not least, the lady who's giving me, making fun of me about my comments about her furry mic. Uh, Brittany, thanks. Even though you were a little Thank late, you for always... not making sure you don't go a show without mentioning it by yeah, well, talking no, about I... the comments. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course I have to. Oh. Hey, thanks for being here. I know you got here late. We we really appreciate the extra effort as always. And it's great to have you back. We missed you. Where can folks thanks. find you? Thanks for having me, Chuck. On Twitter, I'm ADD Liberator. I will definitely be tweeting about Dub Dub stuff next week, which is literally the only thing I can think about. And um, and and if there's fun things, tell me about them because I'm not a developer, but I'm excited and I want to do virtual hangout things. So yeah. Let me know if there's stuff going on because I'm excited Great. and I want to celebrate. So yeah. Is there anything, thanks. any, anything else we should talk about, Brittany? Um, <laughs> dub, dub. Oh, oh, that. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> going to talk about that here. Okay. Well, we, we can't, we won't. <laughs> we can. <laughs> well, I think it's only find me there because it's private. <laughs> well, I, if, if you want to let them know, you, you go for it. If not, you know, it's up to you. Okay, I, I just say to don't because now everyone's wondering exactly what Chuck is talking mm, about. Come yeah, back this next is week. how we keep mystery <laughs> in the relationship. Yes. No, I'll just announce yeah. it after the fact. Okay, all right. So just wait a few uh, weeks. It'll be fine. No, I, I can't stand it. I've got to announce it. Brittany <laughs> is returning as a mermaid at Disney World. So. No. No. no <laughs> okay. okay. One, Disneyland, I'm way Chuck. too old it's for Disneyland. that. Crap. Oh, Disneyland, not Disney World. <laughs> Disney, all right, all right. Ooh. Disney snobs. <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This has been Mac Voices Live. We do this every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We always have a lot of fun here. Whether whether we're serious or not, we always have a lot of fun. We would love to have you join us in the YouTube chat room. Thank you to everyone in the chat room. You guys were a little quiet tonight. It, it concerns me, um, but at least you were, you were there, so we appreciate it. We will see you next Tuesday, and I'll see you next time on Mac Voices. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.